It began here. Seven strangers living in a house together. I'm not going to be that nice to you. I have AIDS. I have sexuality. Every inch of their lives recorded. The world had never quite seen anything like it. Hi, my name is Trishel. Oh, Funny, outrageous, dirty. Oh, girl, but not like that. Raw, honest. I have some bad news. My mom died. Real. Get out of my face! Boom. Reality television was born. Ian and Murray changed everything. Save the world! You want to see the world in one night? Come with me. Why are people taking pictures of us? My name is Kim Kardashian. No. And Daddy is Kanye West. We didn't just launch a new genre. We transformed modern storytelling. That's kind of a big deal. And media and entertainment shifted forward. Forever. That may sound a bit grand. Because it is. Reality is about revealing what makes humans tick. I feel like I don't mean anything to you. That's how you make me feel. Real emotion. I had my first kiss! Ah! Okay, okay, okay. Real connection. Real life. And that reality is at the core of the best stories in the world today. Scripted or unscripted. Documentary to animation. Doesn't matter. I'm Emily, and this is my Wonder Lab. This is the Crystal Maze. The real behind reality is at the center of stories that shift culture. America's built on white male supremacy. Oh God, here we go, bro. I've been silenced for 20 years. It will not stand. I didn't want to lose my daughter. I had to make the hardest choice. How we live. It's just the way she is. How we grow and change. Do you think you might be pregnant? Well, I'm three days late. How we fall down. I don't want to make mistakes. Like, I want to make bad decisions and learn from them. And how we pick ourselves up. She always fought. She never gave up. Moments that are funny. Oh, oh. oh my God. And terrifying. This is so creepy. Oh. Moments oh. when you have to look away. It's storytelling that transcends reality TV. Our criminal justice system is badly broken. By revealing the commonality between us. I love you. I love you too. And I'm sorry. In every genre, on every platform. The world needed reality TV to evolve. Stories of real life, told with real heart. Welcome to Meet the Biz. <laughs> <laughs> I love saying that. Um, we have today, uh, I mean, I'm going to throw out some names because this is the real world, right? <laughs> the real world, road rules, keeping up with the Kardashians, starting over, Project Runway, born this way. He, he's the creator of one of the first and biggest, the real world. In fact, I keep on I keep on hearing in my head, he gave birth to reality TV. He's like the, 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 the dad of it. He's one of the kindest men. Uh, and he's here today, Jonathan Murray. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. Oh, and I see John Tucker there. Yes, Mr. Tucker. Mr. Tucker. Tucker. Hi. Oh, <laughs> where are we? I love this. Might as well say hello, John. Hey, how you doing? Oh my goodness, it's so crazy. <laughs> long, long time. Long time. Glad to see you. Uh, hey, glad everybody. To see you there and uh, you've survived COVID. I'm so happy that you're alive and well. Yeah, I yeah, am. Everybody's here is doing good. My mom's doing good. Everybody's is doing good. So. Excellent. Well, uh, we're glad to, it's, it's a little reunion today. So thank you uh, for being here, Mr. Tucker. Always, always. No, I can't pass up. I love y'all, like seriously. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. So, uh, Mr. Murray, Mr. Yeah. Murray, um, what brought you to reality TV? Wow. Um, you know, I went to journalism school mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a producer of news, of, of broadcast news. I grew up at a time of Mary Tyler Moore show, which was about a young woman working in a television newsroom. And I wasn't, I, I was interested in showbiz, but I was from upstate New York, as far away as you can get from Hollywood. And I didn't know how I got to somewhere where I could sort of be part of this industry. So I focused on my local news 
And so I went to journalism school, studied at the University of Missouri that owned a NBC TV station that you worked at while you went to school. And then when I graduated, I went right to work in Green Bay, Wisconsin, producing the 10 o'clock news. Um, and I did news for a while and eventually um, moved into programming and station running a TV station. And then I went to New York to help a whole bunch of TV stations buy and schedule their syndicated programming. And then I started to come up with ideas for TV shows and got to sell them back to Hollywood. And then finally, I actually, one of the TV shows, I actually had to go to Hollywood to produce it. And so finally, it was a long way going from Green Bay to Atlanta, to Cleveland, to Rochester, to New York. But finally, I got to Hollywood. Oh, I love that. I love that. And now, when you got to Hollywood, what, what was the first explosion for you? What was that first big break, you could say? Well, like a lot of stories, there wasn't a first big break. I mean, we produced this pilot called Crime Diaries, which was sort of a little like what Law and Order is today. It followed a group of fictitious um, detectives, but the crimes were, were based on real crimes. Right. And um, so I was partnered with Mary Ellis Bunham, who had worked in soap operas, and we, we shot a pilot for this show called Crime Diaries. Um, it did not get picked up by enough stations, so it didn't go forward. But we loved working together, and we loved blending my news and documentary background and her soap scripted background and you can see how that might create something called reality tv and we started playing with these ideas trying to to put people together in different ways to try and tell stories and it but it took it wasn't it was almost five years before we got a, a call from mtv to help them develop a scripted soap opera about young people starting out their lives. Right. And when that scripted soap opera proved too expensive for them, we pitched the real world. We pitched, let's take seven people from different walks of lives, put them in a house together, you'll get conflict. Out of that conflict, you'll get growth, and that growth will be our story arc. And that was the pitch that changed my life. Yeah. And, you know, and and unleashed reality TV on all of us. Yeah, it's it's amazing listening to your process of that because I love to make soups. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, um, in fact, uh, yeah, um, uh, you know how they say on Seinfeld, the soup Nazi, I'm the soup Jew. Um, but it's I I love how you can just throw stuff together, you know, two different kinds of, and make this amazing creation which has been so successful to you. Um, do you have like a favorite or an, an episode of any of your shows that first comes to mind? It doesn't have to be a favorite, but um, you know, and what is that and why? Wow, that's a good question. Um, well, certainly the third season of The Real World, um, when we introduced a young man named Pedro Zamora, who was HIV positive and who was, um, and really educated young people who watch the show about HIV and AIDS. Yeah. Um, and um, it was just a very powerful experience for all of us to, um, to, to get to tell Pedro's story and to see the impact of telling his story. And I tell you, it wasn't until Born This Way that I could, uh, that I could top that first experience. Right. What was it about Pedro's that, that was so close to you? Why did you, why did you feel compelled for that? Well, when we decided to take the series to San Francisco, we knew, and you know, that was 1994, yeah. and AIDS was at its peak, and there was yet no magical cocktail of drugs that could save people's lives. So it was a, it was a big issue facing young people, and, um, and, and lots of people. Um, and so we knew we wanted to feature someone uh, who was HIV positive. And we looked in San Francisco, but then one day I opened this letter at my desk and out fell these matinee idol pictures of this Latino young man. And then this letter where he poured his heart out to me uh, and I passed it over to my partner, Mary Austin. I said, we have to go meet this man in, in Miami. 
And uh, when we did, we just fell in love with him and, uh, and his story. And he wanted a chance, you know, not only to educate people, but he just wanted to go to San Francisco and have an opportunity to, to meet someone and fall in love, you know? Yeah. So, so it was, it was, it was really a, an incredible experience. And then, you know, sadly he passed away um, uh, this, the same night that the final episode of that s- season aired, um, you know, so anyway, so it was, and, and just seeing the impact and, you know, Bill Clinton, the president of the United States talked about how Pedro did more to educate young people than anything his administration could do. So, you know, I think, uh, and I was having this conversation yesterday with some, some TV producers, yeah. we love it. You know, television has such potential to educate and to um, represent people who aren't normally seen and are not, and whose voices aren't heard. And I think Pedro was an example of where we were able to um, represent um, something that wasn't being seen on television. And we saw that it had a powerful impact. And so um, anytime you could do that as a producer, um, you know, it's just the rewards are so great. Well, it's interesting too because it leaves such that 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 ep, that show Pedro is like in the in the books, and it it resonates through us all still. I mean, I grew up in the Bay Area and in San Francisco, and I had many friends who passed. So when I hear the name Pedro, I I I go to that, and it's thank thank goodness for creators and producers like you that will put it out there and teach us or uh, allow society to take it in and realize what's going on uh, in the world. And and what I thought was so wonderful too is when I was reading the IMDb and uh, your IMDb, I was saying how you got to have a part in the movie of his life, right? In Pedro. Yeah, we, um, a number of years later, we uh, worked with the, um, with the screenwriter, Dustin Lance Black, who had written the movie Milk. Um, and we told um, Pedro's larger story, um, as you can do when you do a scripted feature. Um, and we told the story of his growing up in Cuba, of the um, death of his mother when he was a young teen, and, and just, you know, that, that larger story that um, we just told a small part of it on the real world, but he was, we felt there was so much that people could learn from him that we needed to tell that larger story. So it was very exciting to, uh, to work with, um, you know, with, with Wash Westmoreland, our producer, and with um, Justin Lance Black and, 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 and do this, uh, this feature right right well um there were so many i mean i i think of the real world and i also think of of course um born this way um i mean the simple life making the band death out loud you know all these i mean so many shows i was like swimming in your um website the other day and it was so nice and you have um, I mean, you got in. How did you get involved with one of your projects, uh, Autism the Musical? Yeah. Um, at some point, um, I turned to Sasha Alpert, who was our head of casting, mm. and I said, You know, you and I both come out of documentaries, and, you know, there are some stories that we can't tell through reality TV. We need to be making documentaries. And let's take some of that, some of those profits that we make from our reality shows and turn them into, you know, documentaries. And so that was, Autism the Musical was our first uh, documentary. And it was a friend of Sasha's was involved in the early stages of it and brought it to us. Um, and it was basically the story of um, five or six young people who were participating in a theater project um, 
and uh, the Miracle Project. Yeah. And um, the idea was is that putting them in this theater project would force them to have eye contact, would, would help them sort of um, uh, work through some of, you know, what it's like to be autistic to, to interact and focus uh, and also to write and tell their story. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful uh, project and it goes on every year. And so we followed these uh, four or five families as, as their um, sons and daughters went through this project and made this wonderful documentary that really showed, um, you know, as always that we like to do, it showed the, the, the ability uh, in the disability. And it also showed um, the challenges that these families face and how they try to, to mount them. Um, and, uh, and we were fortunate enough that, you know, it, HBO bought it and uh, it won an Emmy Award. Mm. So it was very exciting. And, uh, um, and then just two years ago, we did a 10 year follow up to it okay. to sort of see where these young people are today. And a couple of them are in college, others have jobs. It's just amazing um, what, you know, they're all just, they're all just being their best self. Yeah. You know, it's really exciting to see how you know, with with great support and um, with setting high expectations, um, how how people with all kinds of disabilities can can sort of meet the mark and be them their best self. Yeah, I uh, it was great because we had Elaine Paul come on mm -hmm. uh, uh, at a time, and I I know her as well, and some of our students here are also with the Miracle Project, so. Yeah, no, I love going and seeing their show each year. It's so good. Right. I want to, uh, we have a few people who, who sent in questions and, and said, hey, I would love to ask a question. So I'm going to just go, you know, now and then pick someone out that who sent in that uh, question. I think, let's see, is Zuli Johnson here? Zuli Johnson, let's see. I have to look on the, oh, there she is. Let's see. Zuli, Zuli, Zuli. I'm right here. Oh, okay. Wait, wave your hand or say hello. Hello, Mr. Murray and David. Oh, there you are. Okay, here we go. Add spotlight. There's Zuli. Okay. In your early study and your journalism, that you could write a weird light reality, what's scary that that means to you the most. So yeah, in your or in your early story, uh, studies in journalism, if you could write a real life reality, of what story would mean the most to you? Great. Wow. Um, I don't know. I've actually been writing a one man show about my own life and about the sort of decisions that I made along the way that got me to this point. And it's been really interesting. I think sometimes when you get to a certain age, you start looking back and you try to make sense of your life. And so I worked with a friend of mine who's a writer and we just started laying out this story of, 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 of the choices that I made along the way. Wow. I'm, that's exciting to hear that that's coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, luckily I, had a, I, I got it all written and then COVID hit. And so I had done one little workshop production of it and then everything closed down. And so soon I'm gonna to have to take it back up and get out there with it. And I, and I need to go back and look at it again um, because I'm sure I've gotten a lot of new insights as a result of you know, everything we went through with COVID. Thank you, Zuli, great question. Thank you, Zuli. Uh, uh, let's see who we have next. Lanzarod Record. Lanzarod Record. Let's see. Hi, David. Hey, Lanzarod. Hey. Hi. Hi, uh, Jonathan. Hi. Okay. What is the first show you produce? Wow, the first show I produced. Well, the first show I produced was probably 
you know, like the 10 o'clock news in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I mean, that was the first show I got paid money to produce. Um, I had made some little films when I was, um, you know, a teenager. I would make these little Super 8 movies uh, and I'd put a Jonathan Murray production directed by Jonathan Murray, yeah. produced by Jonathan Murray, starring Jonathan Murray. Uh, I think a lot of us have done that. Yeah. Um, but but uh, producing the 10 o'clock news in Green Bay, Wisconsin was my first, first production. And then in Hollywood, as we mentioned earlier, this pilot we did for Crime Diaries was, uh, was sort of my first uh, experience of producing something in Hollywood. Great question, Lanzarote. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, it's interesting that you say that because um, I remember in first grade, I produced, directed, and starred in Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be the witch, but I got to play Hansel. <laughs> was, say, was there a gender fluid thing going on? I don't know. I just probably, <laughs> but I was always obsessed with the Wicked Witch. Um, uh, did uh, And you were talking about producing, directing, acting. Why did you, or how did you feel that you went toward producing rather than acting or rather than? Oh, because I'm a control freak. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, when, when I've always been the person when someone, a teacher, whoever it is says, oh, we got to get this done. Will anyone make it happen? And I'm always the person who raises my hand. And you know, part of it is that I just want it done right. And I somehow believe that I'm the only one who knows how to do it right. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's that, yeah, it's that wanting to be in charge, wanting to be in control. I like that. I, I, it's interesting because I, I struggle with that because I feel, oh, other people might know better than me. And then I'm, sometimes I start realizing, yeah, but my idea is not, not, it's okay. In fact, coming from that, how do you, let's say if, if somebody has an idea, what would you suggest to them is the first step with that idea to move forward with it? That's always difficult. Um, you know, I, I feel like it's sort of like you have to pay all these dues before you get to the point where you can take an idea forward. I mean, yes, you can take it forward maybe yourself and make some kind of a TikTok video or something. But in Hollywood, you know, half of it is getting in the door. So you have to have sort of sort of built all those layers of respect and understanding and knowledge so that someone will take your idea seriously. You also have to understand, you know, where you're taking the idea, whether they have the money to make this kind of the show whether it would fit with what they're looking for. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more than just an idea. Yeah. Um, a lot goes into actually making that idea and getting it on the air. Right, right. Um, we have another question from Gary. Gary, there he is. Right. There he Can is. you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes, let me, oh. Let me try to I'll wave. <laughs> wave. I there we go. Wave. And oh, there he is. Okay. And spotlight. <clears throat> uh, yes, Jonathan. Um, before the series, what was your personal experience with any members of the Down syndrome community? Not a lot. Um, okay. not a lot. Uh, you know, I I had seen a couple of documentaries and uh series that uh, were done in Europe, and um, it it made me start thinking that there was uh, an opportunity to tell this story. So I contacted um, New Horizons, uh, which is in um, the North Valley, uh, and they are uh, they they have a lot of clients who have Down syndrome or intellectual disabilities. And I sort of went over there and just spent some time there and got to know the folks there and sort of began this educational process. Um, because if you're gonna tell someone's story, you really have to take the time to educate yourself on that story. Um, and then to surround yourselves with 
people like the people at New Horizons and then this group Respectability to make sure that I'm telling that story authentically, uh, that I'm telling it, you know, with the with the best intentions. Mm. It's beautiful. But I identified, I mean, no, I, you know, um, I am left-handed in a mm -hmm. right-handed world. Mm -hmm. I'm gay in a world that's mm -hmm. supposed to be straight. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's areas of common bond where you can feel, I feel at times like an outsider, like the world wasn't necessarily made for me and, and the world isn't always welcoming to me. So I think we can find these areas of commonality also that help you um, tell the story of an of another group of people mm -hmm. great thank you thank you. thank you um what brings you the most joy in life wow um besides a chocolate frosted cupcake <laughs> and vanilla ice cream <laughs> that's my guilty pleasure and I make them and then I freeze them. And then the last three nights, dessert has been a chocolate cupcake with vanilla ice cream. I'm coming over to your house to have some chocolate. <laughs> and I make and I make the frosting using vegan butter. So it's almost healthy and good for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, but yeah, no, but uh, I uh, uh, have had a uh, partner for 31 years. We met playing tennis. We have a 23 year old son. Uh, so I get a lot of joy out of, of, of them and our little family unit. And our son is now off living on his own, but he's, you know, he's still here for dinner a couple times a week and we're still helping him out in different ways. Um, but yeah, and I've taken up during COVID, I took up uh, road biking and I took up golf and I took up pickleball. Um, so yeah, so I just, um, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to learn new stuff. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting too, that with, with COVID now, it's like, thank God every morning, just to center myself. Now I take a walk. Mm -hmm. And the, I, the, one of my favorite sounds are birds, the morning birds. And then you walk by and there's just a cool breeze and you feel the breeze and there's the dogs and there, and it's just, and yeah. not, I'm starting to exercise. <laughs> well, that's good. I think it's really important to start your day in a very centered way. You know, each day is a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it's my favorite time of day, the morning when I wake up because there's yeah. so much opportunity and promise for a new day. Talking about, you, you, you mentioned your family and Dylan, mm -hmm. your son. Um, and I mean, you have creative genes in your family, Dylan and your, your niece, Haley. No, there's no, this Haley is on Wikipedia. I have no niece named Haley. Oh, really? Okay, I, I get that gorgeous. now. I have gone under Wikipedia and taken that off and it gets popped back on. I don't know. I mean, I, there was a Haley in one of our shows, but I have no relation to her. Wow. Well, Wikipedia, if you're listening, take it off. <laughs> I heard that, that. I guess Haley puts it back on. I don't know. But it, <laughs> right. Uh, uh, but yes, our son uh, is a musician, a photographer. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's very creative. Um, I wish he had been a little more traditional uh, mm -hmm. and gone to college because um, I loved college. I love that experience of, of being with other people and, you know, having an opportunity to learn every day. Mm -hmm. But he sort of learns through on his own through, you know, his phone and, you know, he looks stuff up and he has a great vocabulary and, uh, you know, so he's, he's making it work. But yeah. uh, you know, you just have to support uh, support your children and, and their path, whatever they decide to take. Definitely. I, when you were saying going to college, I relate to that because sometimes people think, oh, right when I get out of high school or I, I've got to get to Hollywood right away. But I'm so glad that I took that time to take those few years in college. Yeah, no. And, and, and there's that opportunity with college and with, you know, with, with, um, programs like yours, where you meet other people with shared passions, and then maybe you develop something with them. 
So to me, that's what's also great. That, that certainly happened for me where I met other people with shared passions when I went to college. Right, right. Well, um, we have another question today. We have it from Mr. Mark Pulver. Mark Pulver. We'll ask to unmute. Hey, Mark. Uh, yes, how you doing, Mr. Jonathan? Yeah, Mark Pulver, how, how, how you doing? I'm doing well. Yes, yeah, you? just very quickly. I watch all seasons of the board in this way. I too have a disability called living life with autism the world through my eyes. I'm a huge advocate of people with disabilities and looking to follow suit doing something similar to you know to you, you know, with the, as far as disabilities, doing some kind of a a film working with people with a uh, disability. I'm from Miami, Florida originally, and now I'm living here in uh, uh, LA and just wondering, do you ever think about doing some other kind of uh, TV rea reality show uh, work related to what you've done prior to Born, Born This Way? Well, we did. We did something called Born for Business, um, uh, which followed um, young entrepreneurs who had different disabilities. Uh, one of them had anxiety, uh, uh, one of them had a chronic uh, disease, uh, lupus. Um, one of them, uh, Colette, uh, had Down syndrome and she has a, a cookie business in Boston. And then the other one, Chris, was um, uh, uses a wheelchair and uh, he is a concert promoter um, and has a concert business. So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we just did that. Uh, it aired on Peacock, a, a streaming service, and it's really good. I mean, it's amazing. And what I like is that it ties into this idea that, and I didn't know this before, but um, there are so many entrepreneurs in the disability community because sometimes the regular workplace doesn't work for them, so they create their own businesses. Um, and uh, these four people were great examples of, of four people with disabilities who had created their own business and their own way of you know, paying the bills. So Fantastic. It's an honor and privilege to get to meet you and talk to you face to face you know, with this brand new technology during uh, a COVID. It really is. I'm definitely honored. I just can't tell you. Uh, how much honored I am to really meet and 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 know who you are as, as a film producer of people with disabilities, really. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, talking about um, creating a show, how long, and, and this was brought up in one of the questions too, how, um, how long did it take you to create um, the real world? How many years or? Oh, well, you know, uh, it generally takes, um, from the moment you have the idea, there's usually, you know, you take a couple months normally developing it, maybe creating a sizzle tape, um, creating your pitch, uh, and then you go into the network and pitch the show. Mm -hmm. And then it can take, you know, several weeks to a couple months for them to order it. And then usually you have to then do more development, a pilot perhaps. Uh, and so it's, you know, you may not, it, the whole process of actually getting on the air may take a couple years from when you first have that idea. Um, in the case of the real world, we had been working with MTV on a scripted show about young people starting out their lives. Mm -hmm. So when, and we'd spent about three months on that. And when that didn't go forward, then we pitched the idea of an unscripted show and um, they answered that very quickly and we were in production on a pilot within a couple months. Uh, but then after we did the pilot, even though it tested very well and, and you know, everyone loved it at the network, they took about nine months before they actually picked up the series and we got to make that. What is, you know, about reality TV, what what I, I think there's a misconception too with with um, people wanting to go into it too, and are there any? Uh, I don't know. Is, is there any 
thing, the pitfalls, or are there, what are the positives and the negatives of somebody wanting to get into their own show or getting into a reality show? You mean as a talent, as the on-air person? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you, the best reality TV for me is where people are completely unfiltered and very honest about who they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of us actually, you know, are really interesting in terms of what we do, how we do, how we live our lives. You know, others of us, maybe not so. You know, we're maybe a little more buttoned down, a little more filtered, a little more careful. Um, so I don't think reality TV is right for everybody. Not all of us want to be completely open about our lives or share everything. It only really works if you're open and willing to share everything. If you're trying to control the process too much and not let people see certain parts of you, that can make it a really unpleasant experience for you. So you really should only do it if you're really completely comfortable with people seeing who you are. Mm. It's a powerful message. Um, we have uh, Mr. and we, we say that we're cousins and family, um, uh, yet we, we're not related at all, Mr. Luke Zimmerman. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. How you doing? Hi, Luke. Nice to see you. Hey, so I did, uh, quick question. Like, how you pick Sean Tucker on Born This Way? How you cast him? How do we cast John Tucker on Born This Way? Yes. Uh, you know, we met when we, when we met, we met a number of people who were at Performer Studios West and we would sit down and we would have a conversation with them on camera. And John Tucker just lit up the camera. Yeah. <laughs> his personality, uh, his warmth, uh, his sense of humor. Um, we just all fell in love with him and said, he needs to be on this show. Well, I know it's on Tucker from <laughs> Love You More. Right, right. Yeah, they, yeah. they were both on Love You More. But yeah. what about that? Thank you, Luke. What about that, John? What, about, what was your experiencing? experience going in for the first time to um, uh, audition for uh, Born This Way? Let's see, we'll unmute you there. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I think that because for me was different than the others because like Jonathan Murray said, uh, with me and Elena, this is crazy because I, you know, because a Born This Way, um, when I when I started to audition for the show, you know, this is a, a fun fact. Um, I heard it from Jessica Morgan. Jessica Morgan was supposed to be on the show, but she had, I don't know what happened or whatever, but she had passed it. She was doing something else. And she told my mother and me that there was a audition for a TV pilot. And so I went in there and Auditioned for it, um, and so um, it was just it was just it was cool, you know. It was just like okay, well, this is what I was made to to be on the show. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, it was great though. But I have a question for Jonathan Murray. Uh, is so a lot of my fans on TikTok, you know, even BJ, whatever. Um, they be asking me, would there be another bonus way reboot or something like that? Like, you know, and they be asking me a lot, even on Facebook or or TikTok, they be asking me, uh, we um we miss your soul. When your soul coming back on, you know, is this, is there gonna be a, a um another bonus way, a, a reboot because they love the soul so much. Yeah. Um I'm not sure there will be, you know, A&E, our network that carried us moved on and they're doing a different kind of programming now. So I don't expect them to be involved. Now, I think it would be fun, you know, maybe in a few more years, sort of like we did with Autism the Musical, to come back and 
see how everyone's doing and, and do some kind of maybe documentary. Um, but I, you know, that's a possibility, but at the moment, and then I would have to have someone who wanted to buy that documentary. Right. So, so um, yeah, so, you know, even if, even if there isn't, I'm sure we'll find a way to all get together maybe on the 10th anniversary of it to have a, at least a, a fun get together and reunion. Well, thank you. Thank you, John. That was great. It's, it's, uh, it was such a good show that it made me uh, and so many people that I know, I mean, every week, every time a new episode would come on, we would like run to the TV. So uh, again, as people in today have thanked you, I thank you for putting that out there and bringing, bringing the love. I mean, it, um, it, it, was, it, it was seeing family on TV. So thank well, you. yeah, especially for you, because you knew a lot of the people. Right. Um, I, <laughs> we're I real guess. family in a way. Um, but yeah, no, and I think we should all be really excited that since Born This Way, it feels like finally the networks, the streamers are becoming much more open to in be and more inclusive in their casting. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're making progress. That's beautiful. Wow. A woman who just got a prenatal diagnosis of Down syndrome could watch this and see, oh my gosh, there's people that date. My son can get married. My child one day will have a job, will have meaningful relationships, and will have an amazing life. Not like, oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rachel. I, I'm three too. What do you want people to know about you? I have an extra cornerstone in me, but it, I have a big heart, though. Our dream for them is that they could live as independent as they can. My paycheck. Way to start the day. Being independent is working on our own. Hey, Kevin. You can make your life anything you want. Drinking beers. Yeah, cheers. My name is Steven. I'm 24 years old. I was born with Mosaic Down syndrome. Online dating is the worst. She is as crazy as a, a lunatic. My name's Sawa. I'm 21 years old. Are you currently working? No, not yet, but I'm looking for a good job. We feel customer service is the key to our success. Oh, you perfect. feel good about that? I can do it. Is she sexy? Is yes. she cute? Yes, she is cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful. My name is Christina. I'm 25 years old. I like to hang out with my friends, my family, my boyfriend. Love you to hang out and chill. What did you get her? A ring. You got her a ring? It's a really big step to get married. <sighs> if we want to have an independent life, we got to make sure that they have an independent life. No, your problem is I'm not ready. Can you believe that we're talking about our girl with Down syndrome? That she's going to be the first one out of the house? My name is Elena, and I have dreams of my own. Back to one and action. Elena is the outgoing personality. She loves to sing or acting and just being the center of attention. <laughs> Hi, my name is John Tucker and I am a rap artist, honey. It's hard enough in this industry without a disability. Yeah. You gotta let all that go. I got hopes, dreams, everything that you have, I have. Woo! I'm Megan and I'm 22. I'm in college right now, and I have my own business, Makeology. I don't want the whole society to come at me, because I have this. How do you handle dating? How do you handle kissing? I love you. No, I love you too. I love you way more, Brendan. <laughs> I do want to talk with you about the whole baby thing. Okay. I would really, really like for you to reconsider that dream. Oh my God. She needs to be independent, and I worry about what happens when I die. And just the thought of her being alone was really sad. There is going to be a time that your father and I won't be here. If today was the day, he would live with me, and he would take vacations with Christina. <laughs> One of the things about being the parent of a child with an intellectual disability is you just have different things to celebrate, different things that are rewarding, and they come along at different times. 
but the feelings are the same. One day, people would look at him and admire him. And they wouldn't look at him as Down syndrome. And it wouldn't be staring at him for the wrong reason. The doctor asked her if she wanted to have a, a, a person of me. And I mean, I could be out there dead. Your parents had given birth to you. They loved you. They cared for you. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm human. We have to, like, just be the person that we are. And that's what God made us to be. Megan has taught me what's important in life. I had no idea that I was capable of loving someone the way I love my daughter. For you guys to do this for me, you guys really touched me. And thank you, Jonathan, so much. I, it's a pleasure to see you again and, and, and have you come visit Performing Arts Studio West and the Meet the Biz program. Um, we all have been looking forward to your visit. Thank you. Um, and it was so easy. I didn't have to face any bad traffic. <laughs> I didn't have to find a parking space. Right. right. I, didn't, I didn't have to really wash my hair. <laughs> I didn't have to put pants on. You know, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> right? And now you can have one of those chocolate cupcakes. Yeah, no, I'm going to make myself wait. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give in to temptation too early in the day. <laughs>